Hello, this is Jeffrey T. Tiller with Service Management Leadership, continuing a series on ITIL 4 taken from my book, ITIL 4, The New Frontier. The book is very practical, very little theory. And it's funny because the people who love the book love its practicality. Those who wanted it to be something different wished it had more theory. So it is what it is. But I want to share another excerpt from the book and just talk about it. Our analogy is how our service management world is similar to a pottery manufacturer and how all the difference and the nuance, it's hard to compare. So if we toured different pottery factories, we'd quickly perceive the outward similarity of their processes because the commonalities are all readily uh, apparent, right? We could see they all have an oven, they all use clay. The outwardly similarities, they're very apparent. Well, the, the differences, the subtleties, it takes a trained eye to, to notice, oh, that's one type of clay. That's a different type of oven with a different heat setting. When we tour those pottery factories, we don't know the difference. At least I don't. I'm just like, hey, that's beautiful. Or eh, I'm not so sure about that one. But we don't know all the subtleties. And so the same is true with our service management group. There are a lot of people that have opinions on service management, but it's not as an informed opinion. And so we'll get into that here in just a moment. With pottery, we are amazed at the beauty without considering all that went into the process and how that process improved over decades. And ITIL's impact on IT services should be viewed the same. We look at our current maturity level, whether it's high or it's low, and a lot of time has gone into that outcome. And it's still a work in progress. We're hoping to improve it just like the pottery factories. Because you you tour them and they're like, this is decades old process. We, we have this specialized thing that we do. The same with your service management organization. Consider how the, the pottery processes and the ITO processes and practices are very similar in a way. Think of the different kinds of clay as being different types of incidents or problems and how they vary among different organizations. If you are a healthcare organization, your incidents are look very different than if you're a bank, right? And so think about how those are different. And same with the pottery. And it all depends on what is the outcome you're trying to desire. Also, think of your ovens look different in a pottery, one company to another, right? You have a pottery a company that uses one type of an oven and you have another that uses a different type of an oven. It's how do we do things better? And so they, they switch ovens because they want to do things better. And we should be doing the same with our service management infrastructure, our processes, our tools. How do we do things better? Think of the temperature and the size of the oven. You know, things cure different and cook different in an oven that's big versus small. Same with the temperature. In every organization, we think on the IT side, oh, they're all the same. They all have similar data center and cloud structure, similar ERP systems. But in reality, we know that's not true, right? There's a big difference between having PeopleSoft versus SAP. Very different in terms of your incident management process on how those are configured. Are they on premise or are they in the cloud? How are we going to do things better when we think of serving those service management ITIL processes and practices. Let me dig into that because I don't think I said that very well. When we think about how do we do things better, how do we improve, just like those pottery processes, we think how do we do things better with making incremental improvement. So let's, let's take your ERP system. Well, it looks similar. Hospitals, all use an ERP system, and some use PeopleSoft, some use SAP, some may use a different. How are they configured? What modules? See, You see all the uniqueness, right? What else included in that ERP system? Is it just finance, or is it included with our 
our supplier management and our supply chain? Is it also included with other parts of our organization? Those are what's going to be very unique organization to organization, just like the pottery. Now let's div dig in even deeper. How about the difference of using different external partners? If you use certain external partners, it's going to make your service management world better and easier, and some it may make it more difficult. You see all this nuance at play that's so hard for the consumer of the IT services to see this, that your IT and I, IT service management, your ITIL environment is just going to differ, and you cannot compare across organizations. But the one takeaway I want to give you is just like how quality assurance differs among different organizations, production support, early production support, like when we turn it live, is it live or do we have a, do we have a little bit of a buffer? How about the criteria to hand over new functionality, think in a DevOps environment? All this will depend organization to organization, company to company, right? If that's the case, then how can we change, adopt, our service management organization to meet the needs of this or this company. Like, how do we adopt what we do in service management to do to meet all these needs? Because they're needs that are only specific to our organization. This is huge. This is like breaking new ground is how can we adopt our service management world to our DevOps infrastructure, our emerging cloud infrastructure? How do we do things? better in that regard. That's what I'm encouraging you to do. This is Jeffrey T. Fertiller with Service Management Leadership. I thank you for joining us. Please let me know how service management leadership can help your organization. And I hope you have a great, great day.